What's up, I'm Troubleshoot, welcome back to another video. In this quick one, I'll be showing you how you can set up an Aether server for Minecraft 1.20 and above. In my previous video, I showed you how to install the Aether mod and get it going with Neoforged. And in this one, I'll be showing you how to set up a Neoforged server, port forward, and the rest. So without further ado, let's begin. First of all, let's start by downloading Neoforged, where we'll be hosting our server. You can, of course, use a normal Forge server if you'd like, but Neoforged is supposed to be the future of Forge, so that's what I'll be covering here. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the Neoforged website. Here, all you need to do is click to download the latest version which is currently 1.20.1. At the time of releasing, this is a supported version for the Aether mod. You'll also find in the description down below a link to the Aether mod, where if we scroll down and click see all next to versions here, or just simply look at this list, you'll find the latest supported versions of Minecraft and Forge or Neoforge. The latest release here is 1.20.1, and this corresponds with the one that we'll be downloading here. So I'll simply just click this to download the installer jar file. If this doesn't match or isn't a supported version, click here to go to the list, and in the far top right, you'll be able to change the different versions of Minecraft here to download the correct version of Neoforge in order to host your Aether server. Once you've downloaded a compatible version, simply open up the jar file, and if prompted, choose something to do with Java, open JDK, etc. As long as you have Java installed, you should be able to open up the installer just by double clicking on the jar file. In the description down below, you'll find a link to download and install a Java if you don't already have it. And on top of this, if you double click on a jar file, but it doesn't open, you'll find a link to the jar fix, which should hopefully get everything working once more. Once this is open, you'll need to install it for your client. And of course, drop the Aether mod there as well in your roaming app data folder. But I've already done this, so I'll choose install server, and we'll click the three dots to choose a different location to save our server files to. In this video, I'll be placing them on my desktop in a folder called, let's say, Aether. I'll click open and OK to install the server to that folder. If we open up the folder on my desktop, you'll see that it's slowly being populated with files as the installer runs through to completion. All we need to do is wait for it and eventually click OK. Perfect. We've now installed Forge or Neoforge. Let's go ahead and drop the mod in our server folder. So we'll download the latest compatible version that matches our server by clicking the version on the far left, then clicking download at the very top up here. After downloading the mod file itself, we'll head across to our server folder where we'll need to run our server at least once just by double clicking run.bat. This will open up a new window and a vanilla 1.20.1 server should simply be generated in the folder behind us. You'll also be asked to accept the EULA, so I'll press any key, open up the EULA.txt and at the very end, type true to replace false save and close. In the mods folder, simply drag and drop the mod that we just downloaded into here. At the time of recording, it's the same mod file as the client version. There we go. So we'll go back and now we can adjust our server quickly before running it. So user jvm args.txt, we can adjust how much RAM our server is given. So we can set a starting amount of RAM and a maximum amount of RAM. I'll simply copy this over here and on a new line, paste it in as such. Then XMX is the maximum amount of RAM. So we'll add a space and enter this too. You'll need to figure out how much RAM you can give your server. Just keep in mind that if you're running the server on the same computer as your game itself, you'll need to make sure you have a ton of RAM available. The mod should be able to run with three or four gigs, so it's not too much of an issue, but if you have more RAM available, you'll definitely need it for more players, a bigger server, more mods, etc. You can check this with Control Shift and Escape to bring up the Task Manager, then on the Performance tab, followed by Memory, you can see your used memory and free memory as well. At the very bottom, you'll get some statistics and find out just how much RAM is available. I have an incredibly large amount, so I can enter pretty much whatever I want here. I'll start my server with just four gigs and set a maximum of eight gigs. I'll save this file and we can close it. Now we can run the patch file once more and our Aether server running 1.20.1 should simply boot up. That's it. There we go. Our server successfully started up and we can fire up the normal Minecraft launcher. Assuming you already have Neoforged or Forge installed with the mod as well, simply hit play. And if you need any help with doing so, you'll find a link in the description down below to my previous video showing you how to install the client-side mod and play single player. 
Now that we've started up, we'll head into multiplayer, accept and proceed, and you should see a LAN world over here. Otherwise, you can use direct connection and in here type in localhost or 127.0.0.1 as such. When we click join server to any of these, you'll see some text moving around in the background. That's us joining our server running just here. If we type op space my username and hit enter, you'll see that I'm given server operator. I can then do slash game mode creative, for example, give ourselves the blocks required. So glowstone and and water as well. Build ourselves a quick Aether model as such. Use it and we can travel through to the Aether just like that. That's it. It's that simple. We now have our server running and we're playing on it. But at this point, nobody else will be able to join us as we currently haven't opened our server to the internet. There's a few more things that we need to do. In order to get someone to connect to you on your local network, as in the same router as you, you need to make sure that the Minecraft server is allowed through your firewall or antivirus firewall. You can, of course, do this manually or check the description down below for a link to the article that I'll have for this video. Where you're scrolling down, you should see a couple of commands that we can copy that look something like this. All of these net firewall rules allow the Minecraft server running on port 25565 through our Windows firewall. This should be much simpler than going through and adding these yourself as we did previously. So I'll copy these, hit start and type in PowerShell where we'll be running PowerShell as administrator. Then when it pops up, right click to paste or hit control V, paste anywhere and we'll be hitting enter a few times to make sure that all four of these commands run. Now we should have allowed our Minecraft server through our Windows firewall. Again, if you have an antivirus or third party firewall, you may need to do it there as well as that could be blocking connections on your local network. Then if we open up a terminal window or command prompt and type in IP config, then hit enter and look for the way that we connect to the internet. In my case, ethernet, you'll find that your IPv4 address looks something like this, 192.168 something dot something. You can use this IP address to connect to your server running on this computer from another computer on your local network, assuming there isn't anything blocking it. That's great and all, but what about people connecting to your server through the internet? Well, there's multiple options. You could use something like Hamachi, Tailscale, etc. For someone to connect your PC through the internet and join you locally, or you can do the old fashioned method, which is usually more reliable and easier to set up. And that is port forwarding. Don't let those words scare you off. It's really not that difficult. Assuming you know your router's password and your ISP aren't doing anything to block you from port forwarding, then it should be relatively simple with most router hardware. Though as routers are so different and there's so many of them, it's impossible to make a detailed guide for every one of them. So instead, I've prepared a simple example here showing you exactly what you need to do. When you log into your router and head across to the port forwarding section, you'll usually see an external port, internal, protocol, local IP, and sometimes whether to enable it or not. Essentially, you'll be typing in 25565, the Minecraft port for both the internal and external ports as such. If you're asked to provide a range, simply type the same number in both of these here. Then protocol will be choosing TCP and UDP. Otherwise, if you only get one option, you'll be entering it once for TCP and again for UDP in the next room. If you can select both, that's perfect. Then local IP, you'll either be asked to type the entire thing, the last two sets of digits, or sometimes just the last set of digits. In my case, it's filled in most of it. So 192.168.1.something. This is where our computer's IP address needs to be entered where we're hosting the server. In our command prompt window or terminal where we ran IP config, once again, checking how we're connected to the internet, my IPv4 address is 192.168.150. Because I'm only asked for the last digits, I'll simply enter them all the way over here and click add new. Now, Minecraft should successfully be forwarded on our router towards our PC. That's it. People on the internet should be able to connect to our server at this point. But just keep in mind, if there's multiple routers chained between you and the internet, as in a fiber box, a router, then another router, and then eventually your PC, you'll need to port forward each router to the next all the way until you finally port forward to your system. That way, there's a direct connection between the internet and your system for people trying to join your Minecraft server. 
At that point, everything should be set up. It may sound intimidating, but it's really not too bad. Once you've pawned forwarded or chosen another option, other people should be able to join your Minecraft server simply by entering your external IP. You can find this by Googling what is my IP, and usually you'll see it pop up in a block. Otherwise, just use any of the sites that come up in the response. That's it. Now, friends over the internet, and of course your local network, should be able to join you and play Minecraft, the Aether mod, in and around 1.20 with you. That's it. Just a quick note, when you disconnect, your world won't be saved. Instead, you'll need to head across to the console, or if you have this window, this window, in the text area, or wherever you can type, you'll need to enter save hyphen all, and hit enter in order to save the world and everything in it. In my case, I misspelled it, so there you go, save all, and the world, inventories, etc. were now saved. In order to gracefully bring our server to a close and exit out of it, all we need to do is run stop. Hit enter and your server should then be closed. That's it. It's that simple. Press any key to continue. Now our server is offline, properly saved, and the next time we'd like to play, simply just rerun run.bat. It's that simple. Just keep in mind, the server is completely free for you to run as long as this window is open. As soon as it's closed, your server won't be open anymore and nobody will be able to play on that server. The reason it's free is it uses your hardware and your internet, so that's really it. If you need further information, you'll find related guides in the description down below but now you know how to set up your own Minecraft 1.20 and above server for the Aether mod in Minecraft. That's it. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.